Greetings, Eco Nerdlings. In this podcast, we're going to be discussing the history of the human population growth. So I'm going to start you out with a quote. Think of the Earth as a living organism that is being attacked by billions of bacteria, whose numbers double every 40 years. Either the bacteria dies, or both die. So, the common case study for this chapter is going to be, is the world overpopulated? The world's population is projected to increase from 7.2 billion currently to 9.6 billion between now and 2050. New estimates are actually coming in right now saying that there's going to be up to 12 million people in 2050 and not 9.6. So that's a huge drastic jump in the human population. There is much debate over the interactions among populations growth, uh, economic growth, politi politics, moral beliefs. Uh, that's one of the most important that we talk about. So where is that line that we draw whenever we say the world is overpopulated? So from now on, you can only have a child if you meet these requirements or each family can only have one child. So where is that line and who's in charge of controlling it? So that's one of the biggest debates going on right now. Much of the world's population growth occurs in developing countries such as China and India. Now China actually put a big plan into place to decrease their population growth. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. India tried, but they definitely weren't as successful as China was. So many people are arguing that the planet has way, way too many of us. However, some people feel that the world can support billions more people due to technological advances, such as growing crops straight up or vertical farming. So putting different types of plant life as far as crops and things that we're going to consume in these huge vertical eco towers so we can minimize the amount of land that we're using and actually grow upwards. Uh, a lot of those types of people also suggest uh, if humans ate a more plant-based diet, meaning that we're vegetarians, that that will also have a uh, drastic impact on how much energy we're consuming and how many more people that the earth can actually support. So those are some of the things I want you guys to think about as we go through the unit of human population. There is a constant debate over the need to reduce population growth. And again, who's in charge of that? Is it the government? Is it religious leaders? Is it a personal choice? So that's kind of the debate up in the air right now. So we're going to talk about kind of like the brief history of the human population. So during the earliest parts of human history, our population survived as hunter-gatherers, and the population during this time was extremely low. It was estimated to only be in the thousands. So we had little nomadic tribes that went from one place to another, hunting different types of animals, as well as gathering different types of food, such as nuts and berries. Like other species, the human population size was limited by environmental factors, such as competition for food and water, predators, so we used to get preyed upon by different animals, as well as disease. So there was no modern medicine way back in the day, so people would die of all kinds of things. At some point, estimated to be about 130,000 years ago, Homo sapiens migrated out of Africa and into what would become known as the Fertile Crescent. Now the Fertile Crescent is basically a bridge between Africa and Eurasia that had an unusually high amount of biodiversity. If you remember, bio means life and diversity is a lot of different things. So many different species of organisms living in that same place. The eight founder crops, including wild ancestors to modern flaxseed, wheat, barley, and lentils grew there, as well as the ancestor species of four out of the five modern domesticated livestock animals that were native here. So livestock animals that we eat would be cows, sheep, goats, uh, we eat chicken, and then some of the crops that we eat, we obviously eat a lot of wheat. That's what goes into all of our breads, our pastas, any type of baked good. So that's where it comes from. The presence of two or more major river systems were also located there. And that basically sparked the invention of irrigation. So we could now water our crops. 
This period was known as the agricultural revolution, and it marked the first point where humans moved from a nomadic lifestyle, meaning they were moving wherever the food was, to a lifestyle where they could actually settle down into towns and villages. Because at this point, whenever they could irrigate their crops, they could now grow their own species of plant. They didn't have to go out and find it. They could actually cultivate their own crops and water them. So they would be seasonal crops that they could grow, water, and then harvest. So instead of hunting and gathering, like I just said, they're going to grow their own food and they can actually stay in one place. So agriculture gave humans a greater degree of control over their food supply. And as a result, the population began to grow. So I know this doesn't look like much, but we started off over here 2.5 million years ago. If you look right here, this is going to be billions of people. So 1 billion, 2 billion, 3 billion, so on and so forth. So 2.5 million years ago, we had very, very few people. And it stayed that way for quite a while. There was no drastic increase in the population. So around here, 1000 AD, you started seeing the population pick up quite a bit. Uh, and then we have this little dip. That was the Black Death, or called the Black Plague, that many, many people died from. Then we moved into the Middle Ages. During the Middle Ages, the human population continued to grow at a very steady rate, reaching about 8 million people in 1800 AD. Some density-dependent limiting factors were still in place, such as famines. Uh, there are several big famines that you should know about. There was one in Western Europe between 400 to 800 AD. Uh, the Mayan civilization, uh, civilization experienced one in 800 to 1000 AD. There was a little bit of an ice age in the 17th century, so a lot of people died off because of that. And there was also the Great Potato Famine in Ireland from 1845 to 1847. Aside from that, diseases were still a dominant killing factor for humans. So malaria is a really large one that still exists today, unfortunately. It occurred about 10,000 BC, and like I said, it continues on in the present. It's the cause of about half of all human deaths. There was also the Black Plague that occurred in the 14th century, and it eliminated almost a third of Europe's population. So that was a huge, huge dip in the human population when the Black Plague came into existence. We then move into our Industrial Revolution, which is something you guys should have heard about in your history class. The Industrial Revolution began a multitude of new technologies as well as innovations. So we saw electricity come into play, we had the steam engine, water treatment, so meaning that our water had different types of organisms in it that would cause disease. So now we learned how to treat the water, so the clean water led to less diseases carried by water. So that helped to increase the uh, health of the human population. Antibiotics came up into existence. Vaccines came into existence during the Industrial Revolution. And the overall impact was a massive drop in infant mortality, meaning infant death. So the death rate in newborns went down, which meant the population would increase because these individuals would now grow up into adulthood and be able to reproduce themselves. So one of the major factors for that happening was this right here, antibiotics and water treatment. So a lot of times, Mothers will die during childbirth because of, you know, blood loss, that type of thing. But a lot of mothers would actually die after childbirth because of secondary infections. Well, not secondary. They would get an infection because, they, you know, you have lots of blood and tears and that type of thing. So that was kind of a breeding ground for bacteria. So having clean water to clean those types of wounds, as well as antibiotics to treat that, would increase the... Um, lifespan of mothers, so not as many mothers were dying, so the mothers could reproduce and have more children as well. So just kind of point of reference, before the Industrial Revolution, the life expectancy in Britain was about 25 to 40 years. Right now, the current life expectancy worldwide is 67 years. I want to say in the United States, I believe the female uh, the female life expectancy is somewhere around 75 years, and I think the male expectancy is 72, 73 years. Might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's around where it is. So this is the continuation of a graph that I showed you earlier. And as you can see right here, same graph, it's just showing you the uh, population growth of humans. 
And again, we have that dip because of the Black Plague. Industrialized farming, water treatment, as well as modern medicine removed many of those density-dependent limiting factors. So right here, this is the addition to the graph, you're going to see exponential growth. So we're kind of, you know, going along, going along, yeah, this starts to pick up just a little bit, and BAM! Human population explodes. We go from not even having a billion to doop, 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 doop. we have six billion in a very, very short amount of time. So exponential growth, and this is something that you should know, so I might, might take notes on this, uh, occurs when the population size and its growth rate both increase. So it took over 70,000 years for the human population to reach one billion. So that's a very, very long amount of time when you compare it to the growth that occurred afterwards of the human population. So after we hit that 1 billion uh, population mark, in only 150 years, we reached 3 billion. From 3 billion, it only took us 25 years to reach 4 billion. In 20 years, we reached 5 billion. After that, it only took us 12 years to reach 6 billion. And after that, it took us 11 years to reach a population of 7 billion. So that growth happened extremely, extremely rapidly. Another way of measuring growth is through doubling time. Doubling time is another term you need to know about, and this is an estimate of how long it will take the population to double in size at its current rate of growth. So doubling time is calculated with this equation, 70 divided by the current percent of the growth rate. So looking right here at this table, we have the year 1970, it gives us the growth rate as 2.09. So we would divide 70 by 2.09 and it would give us our doubling time of 34 years. Same thing over here in 1980, the growth rate was 1.82. So we would divide 70 by 1.82 and that's how we got 38 years. So this is how you would calculate the doubling time. Well, I hope you learned a lot about the human population growth on Earth and the history of it. You can find more about this lecture as well as others for AP Environmental Science on my website at www.nerdlingscience.com. Well, this is the Queen Nerdling signing off. Stay nerdy till next time.